Our next talk is going to be about Twix. Let's welcome Flokli. Hey, uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about Twix today. Another status update on uh, what's been happening in the last uh, year, so since my last talk. I also want to give a bit of an um, like overview into some of the architecture where we do things differently compared to um, to Nix and some outlook on the roadmap. Yeah, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Flokli, Nix packages contributor since a long time. Uh, maintaining uh, some low level stuff like systemd, nsncd, uh, all nasty low level shit. Um, yeah, I'm working as a freelancer, uh, Nix DevOps consultant. Um, what is Twix? People keep seeing me saying this all the time whenever there is a problem somewhere. I, I want to solve this stuff. I, uh, um, that's why I started it. No, Twix is a Rust re-implementation of the different components of the Nix package manager. Um, and it uses some slightly different underlying approaches, um, but like under the hood, but it tries to um, retain Nix compatibility. So like on the surface layer, if you're using Nix as a as a, as, a, as a programming language or something, you don't really see the differences. You cannot really observe them from inside the Nix language, but there might be something that is much more different under the hood. Um, but we have all the layers stacked on top so that you still get the, the experience you're used to in terms of how, how it behaves. Uh, yeah, it has a modular uh, architecture. So all these different layers and aspects that we have can be differently recombined and you can plug parts out of this into your own thing and, uh, and, uh, and build your own, your own tool for your specific use case reusing parts of this. Um, we don't really have an end user CLI uh, right now, meaning you cannot use it as a drop in replacement uh, instead of running Nix or Lix or anything else on your Nixware system. It's more like, okay, we want to get the foundational components right, the architecture right, um, solve a bunch of the use cases that are quite easy to solve before we, um, we actually have to keep like CLI compatibility and all the weird edge cases that NixOS relies on, unfortunately. But instead, like, okay, let's, let's see what are the components. There's a bunch of more useful, um, easy, to, easy to solve use cases, many of those before you actually need to expose a, a user-facing CLI. Like you can, you can do a builder, like a CI kind of, oh, I have Nix expressions and I want to build all of them. It's much, much easier to, uh, to solve this first and then continue with like getting a compatible CLI. So yeah, as I said, I'm going to be giving a, a short overview on the components to better understand how it's different from Nix. Going to uh, talk about what has happened since the last NixCon talk, and I will talk about what's on the roadmap. Um, so structure-wise, we have a cargo workspace with a bunch of Rust crates these days. There is a Twix CA store. It's a very granular data storage syncing engine, um, which is not really, which is not really specific to to Nix at all. But instead, we have Twix Store, which kind of gives you the store implementation on top of CA Store. It uses CA Store as the underlying engine, and and gives you a Nix Store kind of semantics. Then we have Nix Compat, which is a library containing access to, to all data formats and protocols and concepts of Nix, but it itself is not really depending on any of the Twix concepts, so it's meant to be a reusable library for other consumers who don't want to reinvent all the parsers and, 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 and uh, writers for these data structures. Uh, I'll go more into detail for all of these in, in a few slides. Then we have Eval, which is the an evaluator for the Nix programming language. Contrary to the to the Nix version, it uh, it parses the well. It uses a crate to parse uh, another crate, Arnix, to uh, to parse the code, um, the AST. Uh, I pass the source code to an AST. It's then going to emit some bytecode, which is then executed in a, a Twix eval VM, and it has it ships all the standard, very core built-ins like string manipulation, math, this kind of stuff. Um, but it 
but that's about it. You can bring your own built-ins if you want. Then there's Twix Build, which is a generic builder interface, um, which itself doesn't know about Nix, the same way CA store doesn't know about Nix. Um, and Twix Glue, which kind of combines uh, like the store, the builders, and the evaluator together to kind of give you this user experience that you have with, uh, with like, uh, not user experience, but like the, the semantics and the output path calculation, all this kind of stuff. That's all kind of combined together in Clue. So we can keep the evaluator kind of pure of, of the exact store implementation, and we can, uh, we can mix and match and, yeah. Uh, Wait, this doesn't jump the right place I want it to jump. Okay, so let's uh, use my keyboard. Uh, yeah, CA store, as I said, the underlying data storage syncing engine. Um, contrary to Nix, we don't do like a store path granularity of, um, of how we uh, of how we address things. Like in Nix, everything is by NAR hash. You have a store path, and then you have uh, the contents of it, and you have a NAR representation of the contents, and then you exchange a store path by asking a, a binary cache for like, hey, I want the NAR with this, with this SHA-256 sum, uh, and I want to download it, and then if there's a single bit in this store path being different, you end up with a different NAR with a different hash, so you end up downloading another NAR. And if you, yeah, if you ship like, large package where only a single bit differs, it's kind of a bit wasteful. So what we do is we, we do it on a per chunk. Uh, um, we, we do it on a per file and then a per directory structure. And for each file, we also have granular chunking, uh, like content-defined chunking, um, which allows us to do more granular syncing of and reusage of existing parts in a store path. So if you're thinking about like you have, I don't know, LibreOffice, and you, uh, you already have it on your system, and you get a new version of LibreOffice, and like half of the templates and, uh, and, and, and libraries might be very similar. You, in the Nix model, you have to download the entire new NAR. In the CA store model, if you ask CA store to sync this, it might already have like 90% of the thing on disk, so you end up only downloading 10% of that. Um, so it's going to speed up substitution or copying things back and forth between your builders and, and, and the thing driving the build. And because everything is content addressed, similar to, to how Git internally has its, its, its model, it's like a Merkle structure, um, uh, Twix works similarly, except it's using a different hash function that allows you to, to be more granular and, and, and more sparse in what you fetch, while still keeping the, the content addressed uh, properties. Um, because everything is CA this way, you can uh, decentralize the, the whole substitution. So you can enable local peer-to-peer -peer substitution. I don't know, you have, a, uh, you have a, a bunch of servers running in a rack, and they are all building kind of similar things. They don't need to fetch from the binary cache. They can just ask each other, and they might have all of this already. And you, you don't have to trust them because it's all content addressed. You know the hash of the thing you're expecting. So if they send you uh, crap, you, you're immediately going to see it, and you can ask elsewhere and, and, and penalize this, this person and not, not, not substitute from there anymore. Yeah, and some of the hash functions, it's, uh, they allow you to, to realize this as you fetch, so you don't have to download the entire thing, the, the whole uh, two gigabyte ISO image that you want to use, but uh, you see as you stream the files, you, uh, you realize if something is, is off. And that's the verified streaming. Oh, no, I cannot use my mouse here. But yeah, that's the uh, verified streaming part in this. Uh, we have a bunch of implementations um, using this. Like you have an object store backend, we have a local disk backend, we have in memory, uh, an in memory backend, Red B is another file, like a local database kind of thingy. We have a Google Bigtable thing, um, and a bunch of adapters that allow you to, um, to put this on the network so you can use any of these or any composition of different stores and you say like I want a, a, a server wrapper on top of it and then you just use a client on the other side. So you can recombine these and, 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 and have like a, a tiered thing of, uh, of different stores using different backends. Um, then there's Twix store which is the store implementation on top of CA store. Um, similar backends. Um, 
they uh, they track all the metadata that we have about the store path, and they point to a root node that points to the content in the CA store model. So everything that you binary cache and that you really need to you have a signature for and you need to have a notion of trust for is in these files uh, or, or like data structures where you say like, oh, this store path here, GNU hello, points to these, co uh, put, points to these CA store contents, okay, CA store go and, and substitute this. Um, yeah, and there's another second service that takes care of all the NAR calculation because we still want to be compatible with the old signatures for now to be able to use cache nexus org, for example. So, um, so we need to also be able to render NARS if we need to, but only in memory and only for the, for like a very interesting uh, hash function essentially. But yeah, you can you can feed this NAR calculation service. You feed the CA store node. It's gonna it's gonna linearly uh, render a NAR in memory, feed it to the hash function, and then give you a, a, a NAR size and a NAR hash. And you can use this to, to validate everything is right. And because this uh, is a very uh, immutable, very there's only one possible answer for this, it, and it can be indefinitely cached, and it's a very little information, this, this is generally very nice to cache. So you can also delegate this and not do it all the time, but only when you really don't have this computation yet. Um, yeah, next combat, as I said, was the library containing all primitives in X that there are, like a term and derivation, that's what you see when you look at the .dev file. Then there's uh, the Nix wire primitives, uh, which describe like bytes and, and, and integers on, on the wire that Nix daemon protocol talks, or like that are in the NAR. They're very similar, so we have parsers for this. Uh, the Nix daemon protocol itself, we are not fully finished with it, but there's also work going on on this. We have encoding for a store path and the hashes in front of that, all the parsing for how Nix itself represents hashes, all the code for output path calculation, like how does Nix come up with the output path? I think there's a, a talk going into detail at this, like after the lunch break. Um, yeah, and a bunch more generic stuff that Nix uses and that it's useful to, to expose to, 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 to for general consumption. Uh, yeah, the, I'm, I'm gonna be through with the grades very soon. <laughs> Um, yeah, the evaluator is uh, is containing all the the core built-ins, all the the general tooling that the evaluator needs to in understand, um, to interpret Nix language. But it's not necessarily needs to be aware of all the built-ins that there are. Um, it has it has a concept of like, oh, what types does Nix have? In in terms of this is an address set, this is a this is a string. Um, it, uh, it has a concept of thunks and of scopes and all the, the language primitives, but it doesn't necessarily know, uh, uh, like this specific one doesn't know about how, how built-in stored derivation works internally. But it provides you a way to extend the evaluator at, at compile time by other things satisfying a certain interface. So you can say like, I want to have like uh, built-in dot uh, make a coffee, and then uh, this thing called some web server API that turns on your coffee machine, and then you can have an ex uh, language definition, like a version of the Nix language that allows you to brew coffee. Um, and the evaluator doesn't need to be aware of this. The same way we kind of externalize the whole, the whole builder and, and, and store interaction. What we still need is the IO trait that allows us to, to access the disk or whatever notion of disk we might have uh, using this IO trait. So the evaluator gets passed an instance of something implementing a certain trait that does do IO. But uh, and it ships a bunch of standard things that only access the local file system, but it doesn't uh, it doesn't know how it works inside Twix essentially inside the Twix store IO that's coming through glue, um, which kind of glues everything together. Twix build is the regular builder uh, interface. We uh, we decoupled this as well. Um, it's a very generic uh, build request um, data structure that you can use to describe how a build works. Like, oh, I want this, this binary to be executed in this environment with those environment variables, with those additional files um, and these inputs. But uh, it's all hermetically um, described, like all the inputs are CA store nodes, so you have a, a stronger uh, hermeticity, uh, notion of hermeticity than then you have a Nix because in Nix it's like oh you have this 
you have this specific store path here, you want to build this, oh, then you need to have these other store paths available. So you end up copying a bunch of other store paths to this builder. And then you have to trust the person that sends those store paths to actually be right. And you also lose the tracking information of what specific um, contents these inputs had. In Twix build, it's, 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 more, it's uh, much more hermetic on that sense because you describe this thing in the entirety. And if we, at some point, start end up doing a, a, a more recent signature mechanism or some sort of like record of build log or whatever, we're going to keep all this information because we know exactly this, this were the store paths that have been built with it. We have an implementation for the uh, using uh, an OC, assembling an OCI runtime spec and uh, invoking to run C with it. And it kind of works. There's just a bunch of things in Twix Clue which we, which we properly need to uh, adapt to to actually make it be able to build more than like the first five, six uh, builds. So we can build those, but there's something in reference propagation that still needs to, uh, needs to be fixed. Um, but yeah, technically this works. And you can bring your own, your own builder. We can write, uh, like there's plans to write a micro VM executor using the same thing. and. Uh, a Kubernetes scheduler that just spins up a pod or like a Gvisor um, version of it. Um, so we, as I said, it's very specific to the Nix, uh, to the Nix, uh, it's not specific to the Nix build and env sandboxing environment itself. It's only, it's only describing, it's, it's, uh, it's flexible enough to describe the Nix build, but it's not limited to this. So you can also use this for your own other build use cases. And if there is a backend for it, we can execute it. It's, it's meant to be composable with other things as well. And then we have Glue, which, uh, which brings the import built-ins, which brings the implementation that uses Twix store, which brings all the fetchers and the known path and derivation tracking to kind of tie this all together. Um, yeah. This is a this is one this is one way to combine these. This is a this is a Nix binary cache implementation that uses CA store to ingest from cache Nix source org into Twix store and CA store, and then serve you back an R. But you can use this for like a, um, deduplicated storage of, of binary cache uh, data essentially. And this is this this has been deployed at Bornhack a few months ago. This is something I want to deploy in the future uh, for cache Nix source org. Um, to, to, yeah, to, to test the system better and to, uh, to uh, yeah, provide a, a way to store these things uh, more densely. Updates. Uh, it's only a rough overview. I've probably forgot half of the stuff. Uh, so please also check the blog post and the Git log and, and other sources of information. But uh, what we did we fixed, uh, in the evaluator, we fixed uh, semantics on error, error handling and, uh, and string context. Um, we reduced memory usage by changing the way we uh, restore the Nix value internally. Um, the Twix CLI now can, uh, can like deal with manual uh, mutation of a global scope. Like you can say A equals something and then you type enter and then you type B equals A plus five. And you maintain this uh, this notion of what A has been. This is this is like not valid Nix language, strictly speaking, but uh, but this is something that worked in the old evaluator. It makes sense that it also works in Twix CLI. Um, and with all the fixes from above regarding error catchability and context behavior, we now also successfully built Firefox outpath and Firefox uh, via the cross path. So this means bit by bit we produce the same build. Um, instructions as, as Nix does. Uh, we also added uh, tracing support properly in all binaries. We can propagate traces across different processes to see essentially where we spend time. It's been proven super helpful to see where we actually spend time doing what and, and where to optimize on this stuff. Um, we added more backends into CA store and Twix store, like the object store backend, the local file system thing coming through object store, the, the Red B and, and Bigtable backends, they're all new. Uh, we also got the first version of uh, the composition going on, so we can express caches and can say like, oh yeah, use this local thing, um, but if it's not there, 
ask this other thing, and if it's uh, if it's there, then kind of serve it to the to the caller. But then you can decide to put it in the local thing, which is might be then your cache. Um, we had this Narbridge cache deployment. Um, spoke about store compensation. We also did wire builds together, so uh, we could now start builds. We did schedule some builds. It's doing the reference scanning. It's still missing the reference propagation of inputs and their references. That's just something that needs to be done, but it requires a bunch of refactors because it's already 500 lines of code in this file, so I <laughs> need to do some cleanup there. Um, but yeah, other updates uh, and other people using it, like uh, EDEF has been using a bunch of the and contributing a lot of the, the code for now parsing and now info parsing over time to to closure analysis on the binary cache. So that's already an, an instance of using uh, using this stuff for other use cases that is not writing an alternative implementation of an XD evaluator. Uh, Repolit has been using Twix and Twix DA store to, uh, to store some uh, store paths there and reported uh, 10 times uh, storage reduction in, in what they use for these uh, store paths compared to before because of all the deduplication going on. And DevEnv is has said that it's they are switching to Twix. There's been a talk about this on Saturday. There's going to be a talk about this tomorrow. Uh, so yeah, lots of progress. Um, next steps, we want to do a test suite refactor to allow the test suite uh, to be decoupled, the Twix test suite to be decoupled from Twix itself to be able to run this across different uh, Nix implementations to ensure we stay compatible. Uh, one of the use cases is like fetch tree is heavily underdocumented and we need to figure out the semantics. And it would be nice if all the test cases would be reusable across all implementations. Um, we want to deploy the docs for Twix finally and want to continuously deploy them so it's easier for people to get on board with the project. Uh, there's some questions, especially regarding uh, uh, and regarding DEFA in front of other people wanting to interact with the evaluator at runtime, not just producing store path and producing build expression, but kind of querying. So all the um, language server protocol, debug adapter protocol, and whatever protocols out there might be to ask. And, uh, and, and how, does, how does an interface for this look like? So we don't, um, yeah, so it, it, it becomes a, a viable path forward to, to do this kind of stuff. It, it requires a bit of thinking on the architecture because we still want parallel evaluation um, uh, to work and garbage collection for it, and then you need to be careful with what you expose out of the evaluator at runtime for this to be safe. Want to deploy Narbridge uh, for cache Nixos org, or as a fetch to cache for cache Nixos org to um, to ingest some things there. And there's some improvements for the blob and chunk uh, uh, syncing to uh, uh, to be done so that you can make use of the cache also for the local chunks, not just if you have the entire blob, but also if you if you have some of the parts of a file already available. And to allow read ahead so we don't pay all the round trip time all the time. Uh, there's yeah some work on the fetchers and builders. How do we how do we decide if we want to build or if we want to fetch and which builder are we gonna pick? And how do we trade this off over time? Then some Thinking, done some thinking recently about this. Um, per, per store metrics and instance names. So you see like, oh, I have these amount of, uh, of instances of something, this amount of requests into this specific instance of a store. More backends in CA store and in store. The whole peer-to-peer -peer discovery thing ha has been proven to work in theory, but I haven't found the time to write a backend for it yet. Also, there's some uh, sub subset of the IPFS network that also uses Blake 3 as a, as a hashing function and place basic plain blobs. And I want to plug this into, uh, into Twix so you can use the IPFS network as like a kind of last resort thing. If you don't have it anywhere else, you can, you can do this. Yeah, that's it. If you want to contribute, join the IRC channel, which is bridged to Matrix uh, and XMPP. Check the issue tracker. Um, there's also a to-do list that I started to maintain a bit because the issue tracker is a bit uh, confusing. If you want to pick something, best ask in the channel so you make sure no one else is already working on this and you might stump on each other's feet. Uh, otherwise, try to use it. Try to use it for your own project. Please break it. 
<laughs> and then ideally start fixing it or at least report the problem. And uh, yeah, if you think this is useful and you want to sponsor it either by, by payment or by putting in people to work on this, it would be greatly appreciated. I want to thank to all Contrix contributors, Nix community members in general for their input on a lot of the parts of the architecture and everyone who's been uh, helping to make this happen so far. Thanks. <laughs> Make sure we still have some time. Yeah, we still have time for a few questions, but not very many. Maybe you can decide who. <laughs> I don't know what don't they know. want to ask for. So. Uh, because uh, I think we're you all getting pick. hungry. So, yeah, sorry, you have to decide. I, I don't want to do this task. Maybe two or three. Try to, try to be brief. Yeah. I, I, don't I don't know, know who to you pick. pick someone. It's... I should pick someone. Yes. Okay, I'll pick you. <laughs> yeah, regarding the LSP servers, uh, what uh, crate are you using for syntax parsing in the uh, Twix eval crate? Because... Uh, we're using Arnix as a crate that, uh, that parses it. We get the AST from there and we use this to transform it to bytecode. Okay, and Arnix is just like some non parsers or just it's, it's their own just, parser. It's they, their own they parser. have their own thing, but Okay. Thanks. Uh what I would to like to ask is uh do you have like any opinion on build granular granularity? Because like Next is kind of coarse grained, right? It's yes. like this plant dynamics thing they try to do, but it's in progress. And for example, like is Twix, um, would you be able to do that, or do you have something that precludes that? So I want I want Twix to be fast with all these different things to make it more viable to have more than more, more granularity in each build. Um, for example, we don't we don't write the DRV files to disk or or to the store. Um, th there is a bit more smartness going on in the protocol with the scheduling, but ultimately it would be up to, to people writing Nix code to, to kind of make more granularity. I cannot make it granular on the build side by myself. Someone needs to write the expressions for it, but I want this to be fast and to be able to build more granularly, like more in the basal kind of yeah, yeah, like uh, granularity. This. So you, you, you plan for that? Yes. Okay, yes. gotcha, thanks. It's also build itself can be uh, can be uh, used by other. Right? So if you want to if you want to write a, a backend that that has Bazel on the front end and emits Twix build requests, that should be possible. It's generic enough for it. Thanks. Just a quick question: Is are there any plans for integration like a shim layer to integrate with remote execution API from Google? I didn't try, but uh, the. So the protocol is, as I said, the protocol is not aware of Nix. It doesn't link against any of the of the Twix store specifics. So technically, you could. Yes, I don't know where this is, but it's fine. thank you. Uh, do you want to implement uh, RFC ninety two dynamic derivations? I I think I like I I I'm not entirely sure. I want. I, I'm, it's not an it's not an immediate goal yet. Um, because I think the way it exposes some internals to the way output hashing works and the way of the, the A-term format, it kind of bleeds it into this whole thing. So it would be very hard to migrate to something else if we do it. I, I, I don't know if it's a good idea. I personally would prefer IFD in the way it, it works in, uh, like, like to, to make IFD a first-class citizen so we don't need hacks like, uh, like dynamic derivations. But we can talk about this and, and you can convince me otherwise. Let's talk. Yeah. <laughs> okay, maybe just a couple more. Do you still uh, mean to release the the Rust crates on Crates.io? Yes. Um, the thing is, I, I took a look yesterday actually because I was thinking about releasing Twix Compat, Nix Compat, but it's uh, it 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 requires a bunch of ceremony with what you put in your cargo Tomo files, and and we need to have a process in place to actually make the release less painful because it's one big workspace, and every grade needs to have a README and all this stuff. Like, it requires a bit more work to do, but uh, yeah, I think it would make sense. Right now, you can still you can still pull in different crates via a Git dependency, and you can use the sparse checkout of just the 
the Twix code base, so you don't need to pull the entire repository. But yeah, I think ultimately I want parts of it at least to be on, on Crits.io. Cool, thanks. I just wanted to say that I think this is one of the coolest things in the Nix ecosystem right now. So I went out and I got you a gift, actually. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I hope no, no lawyer of this company is watching this. <laughs> Thank you. Nix heißt jetzt Zwix, sonst ändert sich Nix. You're too young to know that? I don't know. Ryder? Yeah, I, I know it. <laughs> so um, something I'm excited about is because it's in Rust, you can traitify everything. And I imagine that you've done this yes. a, at a lot of levels. So I'm wondering how deep that goes. What um, in particular, uh, if if the Nix language itself is something that would be swappable there. So if somebody wanted to use Nickel, somebody wanted to use TypeScript or Q or DAL or something else, if 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 things are structured in such a way that that would be relatively yeah. straightforward. So the evaluator itself is not, it's not built like this, as in like it explicitly is a Nix evaluator for it, but nothing is preventing you from using a CA store and store and build to, to, to add another front. And another cool thing would probably be like, oh, what if we have Nickel as a front end language and we define a built-in in there, which then uses to fix eval, to evaluate parts of Nix packages. So you can have your, you have your user facing nickel thing, but you can you can use Nix packages under the hood to, to get some of the expressions. I think this is really cool stuff to that it's gonna happen at some point. Okay, I think I'm gonna say this is the last question. Um, or this was the last question. So let's thank our speaker again.